symmetrical it is. You can see how bell-shaped it is. You can actually see that the center point is down the middle here, okay, which seems to reside around 50. Uh, and it also has a particular girth or width associated with it. And what I'm saying is that that width, uh, I suppose, defined by the standard deviation is approximately 15. Okay? So what we can actually see is that this distribution uh, seems to coincide and seems to agree with what we generated. We generated 2 million random numbers with a mean of 50 and a standard deviation of 15. Okay? Uh, let's say for argument's sake that we want to generate a distribution of random numbers that follow a student's t distribution and uh, now all we need to generate a, a a list of random numbers that follow a student's t distribution uh, is we need to know how many random numbers we want to generate. That's the, that's the size, the sample size. And we also need to know the degrees of freedom. Yeah, okay. And the degrees of freedom is uh, is usually the degrees of freedom for a distribution is usually the, the the sample size. Well, for a student's t distribution, it's the sample size minus one. Okay, if that makes sense. Yeah, okay. So what I'm going to do is uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually randomly select. From I'm going to randomly select two million observations uh, from a student's t distribution uh, that has maybe degrees of freedom of let's say f let's say let's say sixty for argument's sake. So what I'm going to say is t oh small t I'll use t dist oh, let's use capital D here dist okay random ran, random numbers okay uh, and what I'm going to say is that that's equal to numbers okay. Uh, that's equal to, or what we're going to assign into there, is a call to the t-distribution, okay? The random number generator function, yeah, for the t-distribution. And actually, that function name is RT, okay? So RT allows us to generate random numbers based off a t-distribution. Open round brace, close round brace. And what we take first, the first parameter, like when we're using the normal distribution and the, the random number generation from the normal distribution, the first parameter is the sample size. I'm going to say 2 million. Okay, and I'm going to generate it from a distribution that has, let's say, 60 degrees of freedom. So I'm going to say degrees of freedom is equal to is equal to 60. Okay, so we generate that. That generates that for us. We've got two million random numbers uh, for that distribution. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to draw a histogram of that or plot a histogram. So I'm going to say hist, and I'm going to say t dist, oh t dist, okay, t dist distribution random numbers. I'm going to hit return on that. This is going to change to be a histogram of this distribution of random numbers that are based off the student's t distribution. Okay? So we're just going to hit return, and there we go. So here is our here is our distribution. You can probably see on this axis here that it's it's like three e plus zero five. What that's saying is that that's the frequency here is three multiplied by ten to the five. Yeah, uh, so it's 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 quite a big number. Yeah, okay. But keep in mind that we've generated two million random numbers there. Okay, so that's that done. Okay, I'll just move down here so there's a bit of space. Yeah, uh, I want to do a different approach. Uh, maybe what I want. Well, what I want to do next is I want to. I want to use the let's say the ggplot2 uh, library packages to generate a to generate a distribution associated with my random numbers. Okay, uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use the ggplot function. So I'm going to say ggplot. Okay, we're going to do this in phases. Don't forget the well. Not, don't forget the ggplot uh, ggplot2 uh, allows us to create layers okay so we can create layers of of uh, of of let's say graphics where one graphic is laid on top of the other so when we're creating a graph we actually create the graph in layers yeah but the ggplot function requires that initially that we take in a data frame okay so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my normally distributed data set here and this random numbers and what I'm going to do is I'm going to let's say cast that into a data frame yeah okay so I'm gonna say data dot frame okay and what I'm gonna say here is that the x values are equal to and what they're gonna be equal to is n dist okay n dist random numbers okay so what that's actually after doing here is that that's after creating my base, let's say my base frame for my uh, my base stack, yeah, for my for my for my graph, yeah. Actually, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to store this in a variable. I'm going to call it ggp1, just to represent my my base my base plot, okay. And uh, so what we're going to do is just going to hit return there. Nothing happens. Okay, because this plot has been stored in this particular variable here, ggp1. Okay, and what we're going to do is we're going to keep creating these frames and these stacks, and then we're going to join them all together. Okay, to create an overall, an over, an overall graphic. Okay, 
So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to create a, a density curve using the, the geom, let's say, the geom function. Okay. And uh, so what I'm going to say, I'm going to call this ggp2. This is my st my second frame. Well, my this is my second stack that I'm going to I'm going to layer on top of this uh, first stack, and it's called geom. And it's actually geom density because I want to create a density function. Okay. Uh, now the density function within here, we're going to define some of the aesthetics associated with it. We're going to tell it what the x-axis is. Uh, we're going to tell it the type of fill to use and the color of that particular fill, and so on and so forth. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to say AES for the aesthetics. Okay. And the aesthetics can take a number of parameters, but all I'm just going to say here is that x uh, is equal to x. Yeah. In other words, the x-axis is going to to be these particular values that I've actually passed in earlier on up here. Okay. Uh, anything else I'm going to pass in here? I'm going to say after the aesthetic function call, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say that the fill uh, should be equal to, let's say for argument's sake, let's say the fill is equal to, oh, let's say the fill is equal to gray. Okay. Uh, and we could just we could just leave it like that, okay, if that makes sense. Okay. So now we've done another stack. Okay, it's a it's going to generate a density function. Okay, based off these particular x values. Okay, so I'm going to I'm going to hit return there. Okay, and now I'm just going to join them two things together to see actually what the actual what the curve actually looks like. So I'm actually going to say ggp1 plus ggp2. Okay, uh, what this is going to do for us here is it's actually going to layer gg2 ggp2 on top of ggp1. Okay, so now I'm going to hit return, and what we get over here. If I just give it a second to process, oh, there we go. We get the density function uh, associated with that uh, set of random numbers, that set of normally distributed random numbers. Here's the density function.